Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So today I'm going to talk about um, a particular Whitefriars book and what makes it so good. Um, so there's two main books and I'll show you this one first. So um, this is the uh, let, what I call the Leslie Jackson book. Um, the full title is Whitefriars Glass, The Art of James Powell and Son. So I'll just call this the Leslie Jackson book, okay? So you know what I'm talking about. And then there is the this one, the tome, uh, White Fries Glass, James Powell and Son of London, um, and that's authored by Wendy Evans, Catherine Ross and Alex Werner. Um, and I'll call this the Wendy Evans book, okay? So, this and this is the one that I really like, and I will give you my reasons. But first I'll show you what this book, so this is a cheaper book, um, and you can, I think it's regular on eBay, I can't remember how much for I'll look that up further on and talk about it at the end but um, yeah if you're the kind of person that collects the Baxter glass this is the book to get because if I flip to the back inside so all of the later glasses here all laid out nicely in color with the years it was made who the designers were so this is what this book is good for you know it's and that's what makes this book great. This book is an absolute tome. Look at that. Um, there's a lot of writing and history of about white fries in the front. And then um, from about just about two thirds of the way through, it starts to give you bits of documentation from the white fries. And then it starts to have um, catalogues that start, and this is the bit that's great, that start in the 1830s. Yeah, you don't see much of that stuff. And um, so if you go online, um, you can find cat White Fries catalogs online, but you can only see um, the ones from the 1860s. And um, so this starts in the 1830s, and then I think there's 1850s as well. Um, so what I'm going to show you is some of the content that's in the 1830s ones. Um, I'm going to hold hold my my um, camera hat free hand because I think it's going to be easier to do that because I can pick out bits and pieces rather than trying to manoeuvre this massive book. So I hope you'll you'll put up with me holding the camera free hand while I'm doing it. But um, I will sh show you bits and pieces and, and also. There's been some debates about dates and bits and pieces of glass, and, and uh, this book helps you knock some of those down. So, yeah, we'll um, we'll move on and have a look at the bits that I really like in this book. And it's really for all fuddy duddies like me that collect this this old glass. So, okay, let's move on, and I'll show you what's in the book. So here we are. Um, so this is the bit of the book that I'm excited about, and it's these early pattern pages. Um, and this is supposed to be from the 1830s onwards and um, yeah in amongst them there's some designs that look newer than 1830s but then if you look at uh, this one here this is something that there's often debated about about the age of it um, and there's another one here and then if I go over a couple of pages, let me show you something really interesting. Really interesting. So this is supposed to be 1830s. Keep going. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so you've got what looks like a later jug shape. Um, with this little glass in the middle. Um, yeah, I have... There you go. Um... So the thing about these glasses is that they were made on the continent. If you see them, let me try and do this with what with holding the camera at the same time. Yeah, you can hear that. So this is lead crystal. Um, some of them are similar, uh, maybe more with a bucket bowl type, um, and they're not lead crystal, and they're usually um, later, um, usually 
French. I've, I remember back in the 90s seeing, going to Antiques Fair and you see these people with masses of French stuff and they'd have bunches of um, what looked like Regency style glasses. They were all, and they would have like tables full of them and they were all kind of late 19th century ones and they were selling really cheap. When you pinged them, they were all soda glass. But yeah, so that's really interesting to see this in the 1830s pattern book. Um, and also, here we go. This is a funny debate that we were having a while ago um, and um, about whether... So I've got one here. So if this had a, hun, a handle on it, it, you would call it a custard glass. And if it was taller, you'd call it a jelly glass. And someone had one of these on one of the Facebook groups and then we were debating about whether it's a jelly glass or a custard glass. However, on this page here, these look to be like custard glasses with their lips going out. I mean, no, jelly glasses. Sorry, get that right. <laughs> yeah. So these look to be like jelly glasses. And in amongst the custard glasses, so you've got ones with handles, you've got ones without handles. So those little short jelly glasses are actually, looks to be, they are custard glasses. So there you go. So that's, and that's why these kinds of um, catalogues are so great. You can see things transitioning through time. Um, let me show you a couple of other pages in here. So you can see things transitioning through time. So this is a, a royal type decanter. Um, at least Apsley Pellet call it a royal type. But here you've got kind of like what look like more modern shapes. Um, this is like a variation on the Nelson type. Um, but then look at, look at this. And these are actually, if you look at the pages, they're actually off the same part of the book because the pages are worn out in the same way. But you've got things that are getting close to what you would consider to be Victorian shaft and globe decanters um, or high Gothic decanters all mixed in the same parts of the book. Um, these might be earlier designs, but then it still looks like they're still in the same book in the same pages and um, still going um, a bit later. But I think this is supposed to be the 1830s. So, and then it moves on to 18... 55 and yeah the things change again now you've definitely got things that are clearly victorian-esque this looks a bit earlier previously and i think there's something like this in the early pages so this looks a bit more like you call um regency but the regency ones tended to have solid more mushroomy stoppers than these and less rounded um yeah the same with this with this stepping um these are more like bludgeon decanters uh, the glasses seem quite delicate and yeah look at these nice patterns that you see that you can go oh yeah these are being made in the early victorian era it's not much on the 55s but then you've got these lovely um quilted designs that you see and there's more as you go into the book into the 60s yeah there's more of these designs but look at these designs here these are very simple i mean this is the type of glass you would normally say this is late victorian um, but then in the same part of the book you've got these I mean this is the bull rush design everybody's debating about every time if this is Richardson's but here it is um, and I think there's another piece of glass with this on it as well somewhere in the book um, I might be wrong but there you go clearly this frosted bull rush design is, is here in 1855 in Whitefriars so yeah it's those kinds of things that I love these, and I wish, there's supposed to be 495 pages of this stuff. Uh, I would love to get my hands on it, um, but I can't. And then when you get to the 1860s, it's all um, printed. So it says the, the 29 pages of the 1860s catalogue, printed catalogue. Um, so, yeah. But it's great because you can see the transition... Um, the glasses that we were looking at earlier, the, the little, this style, I mean, they've got a whole page of different types of glasses here. Yeah, they're gone. 
Um, so as you go through it, you can see that just the whole style of, of work. So the 1860s catalogue is actually online, so you're not buying it for this. You're just buying it for these 1850s and 1830s pages. But, yeah, it does have other things in it later on, so it has other catalogues, um, later catalogues, as you go through, um, and it also has the catalogues um, from from the sort of Baxter period, um, but they're they're not in colour. So that the, and there are bits and pieces that are in in here that are not in the Baxter catalogue. Yeah. So because there's there's basically more of it, but it's is all in black and white. And the bits that I'm interested in is the tableware. So I'm not really an art guy. So yeah, the tableware is quite interesting. Um, but anyway, so you get the idea of what this book's about, but uh, but why I really love it so much. But there is a massive price difference, and we'll have, we'll have a look at that. So I'm here looking at eight books. Um, I will give you a link for this, and um, yeah, there's lots of copies of the Leslie Jackson book here, starting at twelve pounds thirty-five. Um, yeah, and it goes up. Um, there's quite a few 30, 35 pound books. The 12 one is an exception, and then you're sort of like talking 50 pounds. Yeah, 60 pounds. Oh, got it. I uh, didn't even bother scrolling that far. So, yeah, some people are asking 82 pounds 71. Yeah, some people are asking a lot. How much is it? You know, so the price has gone back down. Oh, these are shipping from the USA. So, yeah, that's the most expensive one in the UK. Um, Anyway, and also then, if I switch again, so the cheapest one of the Wendy Evans books is 175 So, yeah. And then let's have a quick flick down. I didn't go do this. 240 250 270 and that's it. So, yeah, there's less of them, and they are a lot more expensive. But you're getting something very different. Um, and if you're an old fogey like me that likes old fogey glass, you're getting something very good, um, something that you won't get much of in, in other books. So not in that same consolidated format. So, um, yeah, you get lots of bits and pieces, odd page here and there, but not like that. So, yeah, we'll, we will come out of this now. So, yeah, so that's why I like the Wendy Evans book so much. And yeah, I bought it when it was new and it was £50. I think it was £50. So let me have a look inside. That's not saying. Um, anyway, yeah, I think it was £50 when it was new. Uh, I bought it then, and that's why I tell people um, things like um, Andy McConnell's book uh, on the decanter. It's out now. It's still in print, or he's still got copies of it that are new to sell. Buy it, because it probably, once, once he's got rid of them all, it won't be that cheap again. Um, the price is, if there's any demand for it, prices will just keep going up um, and it'll probably end up like this a lot of the books like the Bickerton book on um, 18th century glass yes I bought that new and um, yeah that's gone up in price a lot so yeah you need to those kind of books those big reference books get them with them out but yeah as I said I love that book um, and when I was using it the other day to date jug handles or my video on dating Dating jugs by their handles. Um, I use that book a lot, uh, and that's what makes it so good because it's got those little things, and you can see that progression. Um, it's the only place where, apart from the online um, White Fries book, but the, the um, White Fries catalogs, but those start a bit, quite a bit later. So yeah, um, it is what it is. If you've got the money, get out there and buy it, especially if you're into old fogey glass, because that's one of the best references you're going to get. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. So, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe. And, um, yeah, good evening.